Hey everybody, it's AJ from Knife Bible. This video is part of an ongoing series showcasing all the knife makers and brands that participated in our book, Knife Bible. This video is on Lion Steel. Stay sharp, stay tuned. Lion Steel was founded in 1969 in Maniago, Italy by Gino Pauletta. However, his journey started long before that. In 1957, Gino started working at Fabrica Articoli Reclame Maniago. That's where Gino started getting acquainted with some of the tools he would one day use to make knives. Lion Steel has won several awards and accolades for their knife designs over the years. They make a variety of fixed blades and folding knives from all sorts of top quality materials. As far as steels, most of their knives are made of Sleipner, which is a high alloy tool steel. It is not a stainless steel, but does have about 8% chromium, so it offers pretty good stain resistance. It is also very easy to field sharpen and has good edge retention. This steel is essentially a new gen D2 where it has enhanced hardness, toughness, and edge retention. Lion Steel also uses M390, which is considered a super steel. It has very high corrosion resistance with 20% chromium. It is also a very hard steel with 1.9% carbon, 0.6% tungsten, and 4% vanadium. This steel has amazing edge retention, but it is also slightly brittle. If you drop a knife made of M390 on a hard surface, like a stone, you run the risk of breaking or chipping it. Now, M390 is also the equivalent of 20CV. Now, because it is a hard steel with high wear resistance, it will also have some challenges when sharpening. When you sharpen M390, just be patient and consistent in your methods. There are also several products you can use to sharpen M390, like DMT sharpening stones, the diamond sharpening stones, or the Falkneven sharpening stone. I like to use the DC4 sharpener. It's very, very good uh, at sharpening M390. And then lastly, I use the Bushcraft Supply Strop with the black compound. Park River Black Compound. It's very, very good. And this side here has the white. Obviously, I've used it quite a bit already. I have to um, add more white compound. Remove and add more white compound. Now, uh, M390 and Sleipner Tool Steel are not the only steels used by Lion Steel. They also use CPM3V, which is my favorite knife steel because of its ultra high toughness and good edge retention. A few other steels are LMAX, CPM M4, K490, Nylox, and CPM MagnaCut. I will go more into detail as far as MagnaCut in a separate video. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to MagnaCut. To my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, but Lion Steel does not produce any Scandi grind knives. All their knives come with a secondary bevel. So as you can see in these knives, for example, the M7 has a high saber grind with a secondary bevel right here, which is that cutting edge. Okay, this is the plunge line. Here, look at this plunge line here. This forms a high saber grind right as the primary bevel here and then along here is the secondary bevel which is essentially the cutting edge same thing with this m5 same thing with the m4 now the m1s have a full flat grind and you can see that because the plunge line starts right at the top comes all the way down, okay, and starts 
basically narrowing all the way to the edge. Okay, so that's going to form that secondary bevel, but it is a full flat grind. The B40 is the same as the M4, the M5s, and the M7. It has essentially a high saber grind and a secondary bevel, which is that cutting edge. Okay? Now, out of all their knives, the one with the sharpest spine is going to be the M7. Okay, you could make your bark shavings and scrape your ferro rod very easily. My two favorite are the M5 and the M1s. Obviously, you can see I have two M5s and three M1s. Okay, and these are part of my rotation. So essentially, I will rotate these in my bug out bags. Okay, so I'll essentially either have one of these or I will have an Izula, SE Izula, or I'll have an LT uh, Bush Baby. Um, so I'll keep on rotating those. Or I'll have a, uh, a Topps um, Tanin Boko Puko. You know, so I'll, I'll just rotate those pretty often. Okay, these are essentially the ones that I, I take hiking quite a bit, as well as the Izula. Okay, now the M1 is a great option as a fixed blade EDC. The blade length is 2.91 inches and that's 74 millimeters. The M5 is a fantastic camp knife with a blade length of 4.5 inches and that is 114 millimeters. I find it to be a great one tool option. Okay, if you're looking for that one tool option, this is good. It's gonna be a good camp knife, okay, whereas that overall design and size make it a great choice for a number of tasks, both light and heavy. Now, another thing I wanted to get into is the, the sheets, okay? They make very good leather sheets, okay? Very, very good. And they already come formed to the knife itself, okay? So you're not gonna have to be worried about wet forming it or anything like that. They're already formed to the knife. They fit like a glove. They're, they are just fantastic leather sheets. You can tell that they're using top-notch quality leather, okay? So to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of their nylon sheets. Um, I mean, look, they're not bad, but I'm not just not, I'm not a huge fan. Okay. Uh, they, they, they basically, they're par with inter industry standards. So they'll be similar to the same nylon sheets that, uh, tops uses and several others. Okay. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of, the, of those. I prefer the leather sheath by far. Um, as far as handle material, uh, Lion Steel typically uses G10. Um, which is essentially this orange you see here and the black, okay, those are G10. And they also use all sorts of wood. Uh, what you see here, for example, is the olive wood, which is this M5 and this M1. They also use Santos wood and a few others. And they also use micarta, okay. So here is a green micarta. So these two, uh, this is micarta as well. And I forgot to mention this one here, the B40, uh, is also a G10, okay? Now, one thing to note, these M5s don't come exactly like this, okay? Because the olive wood handle scales actually belonged to the blade with the satin finish. I switched them out. So I put this olive wood, these olive wood handle scales on the... Uh, dark, the darker blade, the stone wash darker blade, I switched that out because honestly, I really, really love the look of that dark blade in contrast with the light olive wood. It just looks really, really nice. Personally, I don't find any of their handles to be slippery whatsoever. They all come with a really nice texture. Now, let's move on to some B-roll of me using some of these tools outdoors.
few other things that I wanted to share with you guys, in particular the specs of the M7. So the M7 has an overall length of 12.40 inches, which is the equivalent of 315 millimeters, with a blade length of 7.09 inches, which is the equivalent of 180 millimeters. The blade thickness is 0 0.22 inches, which is the equivalent of 5.5 uh, millimeters. So you're gonna have pretty much uh, uh, close to that quarter inch thickness in the blade. The spine itself uh, is, is pretty sharp, uh, like I mentioned before, so you can strike a ferro rod or make really nice bark shavings. The weight is 14.36 ounces, which is the equivalent of 407 grams. As far as the steel, uh, the M7 is a Sleipner steel, just like the M5s and the B40. The M4 and the M1s are M390. As I mentioned before, it is a fantastic steel, highly corrosion resistant. Uh, the only issue that I see is when you're trying to resharpen that edge, especially when you're out in the field, it's gonna take a little bit of patience, a little bit of consistency in that workflow. It's not impossible, it just, it takes a little bit more time than your Sleipner steel, okay? Now, another thing, if you drop your M4 or your M1s, because they are made of M390 steel and it lands on a hard surface like a stone, you run the risk of chipping the edge or breaking the tip. It's, it's a great steel, it's just a little bit more brittle, okay? That's something that may not happen with that Sleipner steel because it is a bit more ductile, it's a bit more tough. Uh, you'll probably uh, bend the edge a little bit, but it may not chip or break like that M390 would, okay? So essentially that Sleipner steel is gonna take a little bit more of a beating and it should be, it should be fine, okay? Now it's not as tough as CPM3V, but it is more corrosion resistant than CPM3V. It is also quite a bit tougher than 1095 steel as well. So essentially this uh, Sleipner steel is considered that uh, new gen D2 steel. Okay, very, very good. All right, so as far as the sheaths, the M4 comes with a pretty decent uh, Kydex sheath. Um, I think that it, it fits really well. Um, I did have to modify it a little bit so that the blade uh, would uh, enter and exit uh, a bit more smooth, okay? But it is it is a pretty decent sheath. Um, I like it. And then as far as the M5s, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, they come, uh, one of them comes with a nylon uh, sheath while the other came with a really nice leather sheath, okay? Uh, the M1s come with this sheath you see here. It's really, really good. And as you can see, it's already formed to that, um, to that knife, okay? So it, it fits like a glove really, really, really well. Um, and then the B40 comes with a leather sheath as well, and it fits really nice as well. Very, very nice. It has enough uh, tension, you know, so it's, it's, a, it, it's really, really nice. I enjoy it. Um, I think it's a very good leather sheath. And then as far as the blade maintenance goes, just like I mentioned before, um, I use that um, Fall Demon DC4 to maintain the edge. I also use the Bushcraft Supply uh, strop with that Bark River Black Compound. And I use the Knife Bomb that I've mentioned in several videos already. And I will put up the video shortly on how I make this bomb, okay? Anything I could do to save you guys a couple bucks and to make a really good product that's going to last you a long time, I'm all for it. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of the tools that we used outdoors was the M7. We did some chopping, some light batoning, some carving, made some spear points, and we also were able to strike a ferro rod with the spine. Another tool that we used was the M1. This knife is absolutely fantastic. It's really lightweight. We did some carving and we also, we were able to make a uh, small spatula that we use for the cooking portion of the video. I'm sure some of you are wondering, why is this video so long compared to the other ones that I have on YouTube for the other companies? And there's a reason for that, okay? I only have a select number of line steel products 
versus the other companies that I have maybe three times or four times the amount. Okay, so I decided to split the video where I focus solely on the overview where it talks about the company, the products, the steels, the handle materials, and the grinds. Okay, and then do a separate video that's going to be focused on how I use those tools outdoors. Okay, so I'm not going to go into any of the background in the, video, in the videos that are to come. I'm going to go more into how those tools perform outdoors. Okay, and I want you to experience that whole thing. Okay, I want you to see how they chop, how they slice, how they stab, how they cut, everything. I want you to see that outdoors. Okay, and I'm going to be using about eight or nine different knives from SE, from Tops, from LTE Wright, and from Falk Neven, okay? Luckily for the Lion Steel video, I was able to condense it. The other ones, there's just no way. There's just no way. So that's why I split it into overview videos, and then we're gonna do a revisited video where we go into depth, outdoors, and we get our hands dirty, all right? I just want you to understand that, okay? It's not because there is favoritism, because that is 100% not the case. I love all the companies equally. They are fantastic and make amazing products. I stand by their products. And honestly, I feel that they are extremely reliable, extremely reliable. Okay. All right, guys, have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram.